Mick Doohan is one of the greatest motorcycle racers of all time, achieving a period of dominance through the mid to late 90s like very few others have achieved, winning five titles in a row in 500 Grand Prix, now known as MotoGP, from 1994 until 1998. His talent is undeniable, but there's one aspect of his riding that, to this day, still creates debate, his riding style. More specifically, should his riding style be avoided, or is it okay to emulate it because body position really doesn't matter? When it comes to body position, we have a wide spectrum of advice and opinions that's thrown around. On the one end, you have riders who think that you should be hanging off the bike like the young guns in MotoGP, achieving staggering positions that wouldn't be out of place in Cirque du Soleil. On the other end, we have riders that hear advice and opinions and simply say, well, this guy did all right. So who's right? Well, like most things, the answer lies somewhere in the middle. To answer that, what we're going to tackle in this video is why McDoin rode this way, whether that was right or wrong, and what we can learn from it to help guide our body position efforts moving forward. First then, why did McDoin ride this way? To come to a conclusion on this, we can go by two things. What Mick has openly said himself on how he rode, and to take a broader view on the things that happened to him, as well as the era he raced in where his style wasn't uncommon, albeit not quite as extreme. Jumping straight in then, let's hear from the great man himself when he featured on the Gypsy Tales podcast. Yeah, everyone's got a bit of a different style, and I, I think a lot, of, um, a lot of the styles back then were from dirt biking, you know, and especially on a left-hand side, a left-hand turn. Everyone sort of got a bit of a... For me, left-hand corners were sort of always a little bit easier than right. So From I think dirt tracking. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you know, and I'd sit down, you'd sit across the bike. Yeah. At, um, and you sort of control the bike underneath you sort of when, when it's moving around. The right side so was a bit more traditional road racer type on the right because it was sort of a little bit foreign to me, but... Um, the first interesting thing from that clip is how this and other styles of the time came from dirt bike riding. Now, that in itself isn't all that interesting. In fact, it's probably quite common knowledge. But when you consider the bikes they were riding compared to those of today, it does give a new perspective. The 500 GP monsters they rode for most of the 90s were savage. Throw together primitive suspension, tires with far less edge grip, less weight, a complete lack of traction control, and a delivery of 200 brake horsepower that was more akin to flicking on a light switch, you've got a pretty potent and challenging machine to ride. To say the bikes were prone to braking traction is an understatement, and even the very best of them got spat to the moon on more than one occasion. This is why the best dirt bike riders in the world were getting the seats and doing well in 500 Grand Prix, like the Americans and the Australians, because they could handle the machines better than the wheels in line road riders of the time and those coming up through the lower classes. And because we have the best dirt bike riders on machines that are prone to braking traction, at the worst possible times, the styles carried over, where it was more about getting the bike into the corner, leaning it over for as little time as possible, and then firing it back out again. And when they're in the corner, they keep the bike underneath them to help manage that movement and to catch any big slides, while also putting themselves in a less flickable position should a high side occur. It was only once the engines improved and became more manageable that we saw Europeans and other riders coming up from the 250 classes having more and more success, because they didn't need high level dirt riding skills to be fast. Another interesting anecdote we heard from Duin is that his riding style differed going left to right. Again, nothing revolutionary here because all riders will have this to some degree. The interesting part being that his style was more like dirt riding going left because he'd spent so much time doing that on dirt. And when going right, he had a more traditional style of the time and you don't have to look too far to see that he sometimes adopted a style that's quite a way away from the iconic one he's known for. One other factor to consider with doing is his injuries. After a horror crash and an even more horrific operation attempt from a local doctor after the Dutch Grand Prix in 1992, Duin had severe problems with his right leg, a leg that at one point was on the brink of being amputated because of infection. By his own admission in previous interviews, all of this meant that he simply didn't have the strength in his legs to ride as he wanted to. And anyone that's tried to hang off with zero lower body support will know that it's very difficult. And when you don't have proper support from your legs to support your upper body, its natural tendency is to move more central on the bike. All of these factors come together to create the style you saw from Duin and the other riders of the time. So does that mean that his style was right? Well, as I always say in this conversation, you need to understand the fundamentals of body position that you'll hear from myself and any modern day coach and that is to create a stable position that allows you to ride how you want most comfortably while giving the bike what it wants from a stability and lean angle perspective. So, did Duan have those fundamentals in place? Well, he would have most definitely been given the bike what it wants, controlled rider inputs while allowing the bike to do what it needs to do underneath him. 
and he did that in a way that was comfortable to him. The only point that you could contest is that he and others weren't doing what they could have done to help the bike from a lean angle perspective. Now, could you argue a case that he could have got benefits from riding in a more modern position? Yes, of course. We know fundamentally that more mass inside the center line of the bike means you'll lean the bike less for a given speed. Or said another way, you can go faster around a corner at the same lean angle. But when considering the era of racing, the bikes they rode and his personal circumstances, it's not as simple as saying that's what he should have done. If riding in a more modern position meant that he couldn't ride in the way he wanted to to be fast, is it the right position? Ultimately, his style was right for him, given his previous experience, the era he rode in and the machine he had to tame. Things did start to change though. Even though we have evidence of riders using more modern positions even back then, as the bikes became safer and more user-friendly, we did see these positions get more and more popular as riders looked to gain any advantage they could. And as we move closer and closer to present day, we can see things getting more and more extreme. Something Valentino Rossi should get huge credit for because on more than one occasion, he reinvented his style to stay at the top. And if anything, he is a key indicator against the argument that your style is your style because he showed that you can change it to gain a competitive advantage. So circling back to the original question then, in the case of chin down riders versus old school cross uppers, who's right? Well, let's hear from Mick once more before we close this out. Generally, uh, it wasn't so much about the style, what sort of style you got or how you looked on the bike. It was what, what worked, what, worked, what, what yeah. felt comfortable. And, and that's what um, a lot of guys are, you know, how should, I, how should I sit on the bike? How do you feel comfortable? You know, everyone's got a different style. It's like, what's fast? What works for you? You know? The answer then, neither is right. You shouldn't be telling everyone to go and ride like Marc Marquez because a very healthy portion of riders simply won't have the ability to ride like that for any considerable length of time. At the same time though, people will often point to Mick and use his style as an excuse for not trying to be better. Again, remembering that the visual position itself is only one part of good body position. For me, the solution lies in the middle. We know there are benefits to gain from moving inside the center line of the bike. So aiming for a good neutral position on the bike is a great first step. From that position, you can then work to create the stability and comfort that you and the bike need to go fast. If you want to take it further and move more to the inside and that works better for you, great. If you can't quite get to this neutral position but you can still demonstrate great body control and feeling on the bike, also great. For your average rider, these visual nuances in style are absolutely fine in my view. So it's a solid point to start from and something I'd advise everyone work to achieve. That said, at the top of the sport, things are changing and body position is now more integral with the performance of the bike than ever before due to the aerodynamic changes we're seeing on them. And this is something I talk about in this video here. So what are your thoughts on Duan's position and your stance on body position in general? I'd love to hear it, so let me know in the comments down below. Outside of that, thank you so much for watching this one and I will see you in the next one. Take care.